But first, here now with reaction, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. You know, I love when you're right, and I have to. I have to identify that you are ahead of the curve. You have very confidently been saying uh, for some time now that this is going to be a wave election. If these polls pan out, and I'm urging people not to trust them, I'm urging people to, to keep that sense of urgency and resolve. But if it pans out, you'll be right again, and I'll have to say, knew it was right again. No, look, I mean, first of all, your key point is everybody who's watching has to go vote, and they have to get their friends, their relatives, everyone they know to go vote. If that happens, if we get that kind of a turnout, uh, we're going to win a historic election, maybe the biggest Republican victory since 1920, over 100 years ago. Uh, but that's going to happen only if the American people turn up and vote. Now, all the indicators in the last few days are that, in fact, I mean, if you looked at the recent Gallup poll material, for example, where people are just totally disgusted with Biden and with the Democrats, who feel deeply that the country's on the wrong track, uh, they, Gallup said uh, they had the worst data for an off-year election since they began taking that kind of a survey uh, in terms of the incumbent Democratic Party. But I think your point's exactly right. Everybody has to turn out and vote. If they do, I think we're going to see a remarkable repudiation of a set of policies that are, frankly, a disaster. I mean, it, I, I could not have dreamed, when you and I talked about this two years ago, I could not have dreamed how bad they'd be. I couldn't dream how dumb they would be. And I couldn't have dreamed how radical and how weird they would be. All those things have come home. Uh, and now I think uh, it's all going to cave in. And the reason you're seeing people like Obama be so angry is they don't have any facts on their side. All they've got left is raw emotion, because on every single major issue, they're now losing. Uh, and I think as that sinks in over the next seven days, it's just going to lead to a tsunami of historic proportions. So I did make a pr prediction at the beginning of this election year, and I think I've been proven right, that Democrats will run on three things. One, January 6th, and they hate Donald Trump. Okay, that has fizzled out. Then they would run on the Dobbs decision. Uh, that seems to have now backfired on them because most of these radical candidates uh, we have discovered support no restrictions on abortion and would allow women to have an abortion, oh, 10 minutes uh, before they're due to deliver a baby, which would be infanticide. Uh, the next thing is the old historical playbook, which is Republicans are racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, etc. And by the way, they want to cut you Social Security, Medicare, and veterans' benefits, none of which is true. That seems to be the last ditch effort, and that's their final message in the, in the last week of the campaign. Will that work? Well, look, I mean, first of all, the objective reality is people go to the grocery store. You can't run enough ads for Democrats to, to convince people they're not paying a lot more money. They go to the gas station. Uh, you can't pay for enough ads to convince them they aren't paying a lot more money. In the Northeast, one of the reasons Baldock is going to win is that we have a diesel fuel shortage, which relates directly to a heating oil shortage. The prices are going to be out of sight. People are going to be furious. Uh, I have somebody who works with me uh, who says that, that Alan Sokin, is, he said his wife's mad every Sunday. She goes to the grocery store. By the time she gets home, the prices are so high, she's just furious. Uh, I think these things are about real life. And then you go home, you turn on the evening news, you find out how many muggings, how many killings, how many rapes. You look at this weekend in Chicago. Uh, how can you possibly be comfortable? And finally, you have all these illegal immigrants, one of whom, it turns out, attacked Paul Pelosi. I mean, let's be clear about this. The national media didn't want to start with that headline. But the truth is, it was an illegal immigrant who should not have been here who attacked Paul Pelosi. Now, of in course, a I have Paul city. on our prayers. We certainly hope he recovers. In a, in a sanctuary city, I, by which, the way, I, by the I way there were nine assaults that night. I want Paul night. Pelosi to be safe. But I want every American to be safe. And defund, dismantle, no right. bail has created more crime, more murder, more violent crimes than we have seen in decades. And the facts and the evidence speak for itself. Well, that's right. And the, and the Pew poll people just reported that 82 percent 
of African Americans lists crime as their biggest issue. Now, I don't know whether that's going to mean they break for Republicans because the Republicans are pro police and anti criminal, or they stick with the Democrats out of old loyalty. But you start getting numbers like that. One of the great advantages that Dr. Oz has is that in Philadelphia, 70% of the voters say that crime is their biggest issue. And of course, Fetterman is pro criminal, anti police, wanted to release murderers. Uh, and all these things are coming together. And frankly, in terms of this racist, xenophobic stuff, how do you attack, for example, Herschel Walker for not being sensitive about race? I mean, it's absurd. And Kevin McCarthy has done a brilliant job on the House side. They have more minority candidates, more women candidates than ever, and more veteran candidates than ever in history. And it's pretty hard to describe this new Republican Party as uh, the way the Democrats would like to describe it. The Democrats are becoming a very narrow party of graduate school educated radicals. And in the process, they're alienating Latinos, Asian Americans, working class whites. And by the way, among women after Dobbs, there's been a 26% shift, 26 points from Democrat to Republican in the last month. All right. uh, that, that's an astonishing number. Last question predictions. Um, one week from tomorrow will be the morning after election night in America. <clears throat> Uh, what will be the net result, in your opinion? You will be happy. <laughs> How about that? Okay, that's a fair uh, my answer. Per my personal, my personal, my personal guess is, um, being conservative, plus two to plus seven in the Senate, uh, plus twenty to plus fifty in the House, maybe a little more than fifty. Most likely, House number is plus forty-four. Wow. Okay, Newt Gingrich, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.